Kyla and Jordan, thank you so much. And welcome to That's the Tea. We really appreciate you guys' time. How did the two of you meet exactly? Do you oh, guys wow. remember? I know it was a long time ago. official meeting was, but I remember like Jordan was a little, like a few levels ahead of me. So like when I was like starting my first year in elite gymnastics, like I remember like, I think it was 20, 2010. Mm -hmm. And I remember like being so excited to go up and compete against Jordan. But mm -hmm. I don't know like when our first like interaction yeah. was. I, I definitely know. knew about Kyla before I ever met her because she was like the up and coming junior when, like I was the up and coming junior and then I got injured for a couple of years. And during those couple of years, Kyla was like, she stepped Coming on the, on the scene. scene and I was like, okay. <laughs> so I knew, I knew who you were obviously. And, and knew like when I came back from my injury, I, Kyla was going to be my competition. But, um, then we started competing together mm -hmm. probably like 2011, 2012. Yeah. yeah. So in the Olympic year, it's when y'all really start. So it was like an automatic bond when y'all first met or was it like, I know you, so I got to fill the waters out. Kyla was like I was a little bit younger. Shy, yeah. She was really shy. We spent so much time together when we were at camps and and then going to the Olympics too. I don't know. It was like we had our roommates, but we all hung out all together. And um, I actually think Kyla and I probably got closer after the Olympics when she went to UCLA and I was there and we started to get to know each other more in our adult lives and especially now. But I think growing up, it was like we had we had that teammate connection and we were competing and that'll always be a really special bond that we have. But um, But yeah, I don't know. I remember... I remember you being really shy, and then once we got to the Olympics, it was like you could not stop talking. Like, you were <laughs> so chatty, and I'm like, okay, she's definitely not shy. <laughs> Do you think that's still your personality, kind of shy? Until you no, I think I, I definitely grew out of the okay. shy bubble, but I think just <laughs> growing up in the gymnastics world and, like, you're taught to be very proper and very, like, serious and very focused and motivated, and I think I just, like, really embodied that since I was like, okay, these are my goals. Like, I want to achieve them. So like the whole time I grew up, I was like very focused on that. Um, but yeah, like once I got to know people, I feel like I broke out of my shell and now there's not really a shell. <laughs> no, here I am. no shell. <laughs> so you talk about growing up in gymnastics and that world. Can you both kind of tell if your story of how you got into it and, and when it really started to take off for you? Kyla, if you want to go first. Sure, yeah. Um, I mean, like typical, I started gymnastics. Like my parents put me in it at the age of three. Um, I don't really remember, but the, I was like a very rambunctious child and my mom said I could not sit still. I was like breaking furniture in the house and so she's like, yeah, I'll put you in these classes. And then by the time I was five, um, the gym I was at, they're like, you already need to be competing and go on team. And my, mom, my parents had no idea. They're like, team gymnastics? Like, what is this? And they just put me in, progressed through the levels. And then um, when, I, when I was in California was when I really got serious that my gym, gym was called Gym Max. And, I think my coaches knew it before I even knew that like the Olympics were a possibility and so like when I was 11 was when I started elite gymnastics and that was when they're like hey we're setting you on this plan like you compete these meets in hopes of in, like making the Olympic team in 2012 and I followed that plan stayed healthy and I was able to make that Olympic team in 2012 with Jordan and continued on and then went on to compete gymnastics at UCLA for four years, so that's kind of my gymnastics so cool. journey. How old were you when you made the Olympic team? I was 15 when I was in, on the Olympic team, yeah. <laughs> I was 17. You had to be turning 16 that year. Like for gymnastics, you have to be at least 16 that, turning 16 that year. Gotcha. But I was 17. And, and Jordan, how did you get into gymnastics? Very similar story. I, yeah. I come from a really athletic family. Like my mom ran track in college and now does marathons. My sister, same thing. Um, but just like we all did sports. And when I was younger, I kind of had these like, like when I was two, I had like mini biceps and quad muscles, like <laughs> naturally. And so my parents, we, there were no other gymnasts. They just were like, she kind of looks like a gymnast. So let's put her in and do this little class and see how she likes it. And that's, that's literally how I started gymnastics. And um, I was really strong, and so the conditioning and all of the strength parts of gymnastics were a breeze for me, and I was, like, I was good at that stuff, but I was really not flexible, so that was one of the areas I, like, had to get better at in order to actually be competitive, and so I worked really hard at that, but I, I, like, Kyla just progressed through the levels, and by the time I was eight, I was missing a half day of school, doing two-a-day practices on the national team by 11, um, competing in internationally. Um, and then, you know, the rest of it just 
kind of the rest was history, I guess. Yes. So, yeah, I don't want to get too much into the weeds. <laughs> so what is the process of making the Olympic team for a gymnast? Because I know for us, we have to go to Olympic trials. You have to make top three on that day. It doesn't matter what you did. Like any other day of the year, you had to show up on that day. So what is the gymnastics process? I mean, it's you kind of have to have been a part of the national team process for a few years. Um, it's it's really not a situation where you can just show up the Olympic year and, and try for it. You have to have kind of gone up through the elite system. Um, probably by the time you're 13 or 14, you have to be training elite, I would say. Um, I think both of us started maybe a little bit younger. But, um, but for gymnastics, you have to be on the national team. And then throughout the course of the year, you can vie for these international assignments so where you would go to other countries and be on these teams and represent Team USA and kind of get that international experience. Basically prove yourself. Um, and then also we were going to uh, national team camps once a month in Texas um, where we would spend five days training and essentially proving ourselves every second of the day. Um, but in gymnastics, it's tough because, I mean, in our Olympics, only five girls made it out of all the gymnasts in the entire country. And so it's very intense. You have to peak at the exact right time and the pressure is... You know, I'm sure it's that way in every sport, too. The pressure is so high. Um, but we do have an Olympic trials process, and so we would, you'd have to be on the national team, then you can go to Olympic trials, and, um, and then they would choose the team from Olympic trials. But it wasn't necessarily as simple as the top five. Um, it was, you know, if you, got, if you won the Olympic trials, you automatically made the team, and the rest were just chosen by the selection committee. So um, you That's compete so in trials. Yeah. 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 Sure. You compete in trials, yeah. and then you go to this room, <laughs> and you sit there, and you're like, all With right. all the athletes and all the coaches oh, wow. in this room. You sit there, and you're just kind of like, well, what's my fate? And then they come in and read a list of names, and then immediately you, you march out, and the entire crowd is cheering for you. It, is, it was insane. Um, I was going to say, like, what's the emotions in that room? Is everyone just kind of silent? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I feel like sil I think there was already, like, some tears before because some people already knew before. I think they had an idea. But, but yeah, I mean, like she said, it's, like, one person, like, like automatically gets their spot, and then the rest are kind of, like, puzzle pieces. So I think, like, you kind of know, like, you, f you feed into, especially that Olympic year, your strength. So, like, I was definitely more of a bars and beam athlete when I was an elite, so I definitely try to, like, make those my stronger events. Um, I mean, you compete all around pretty mm. strongly, but like for me that year, I was like, my coach has really played into like, okay, she's, she's, she really needs to be strong on those two events to give her a chance to be on the team. That's so cool. Yeah. Especially I'm a gymnastics fan. I watched <laughs> y'all like, I, I still, I watch all the stuff, the cups and all that. Yeah. I don't know all the in and outs, but mm. it's cool. Cause we just see the team march yeah. out and we hear like the commentators saying what people were doing throughout the years and stuff. So it's very different hearing y'all side. Mm of it and yeah. sitting in a room I couldn't imagine sitting in a room with the other Trek athletes I'm like go to McDonald's oh, or something yeah. like, it was <laughs> excruciating I'm like yeah. me and Allie are like holding hands like squeezing each other and of yeah. course my last name starts with a W so they're reading oh. in alphabetical order oh, oh no <laughs> I'm pretty sure the last name I don't called. even remember that I, was, I'm pretty um, sure the I last think it blocked out taking that pressure and that stress at such a young age yeah because that that's too. 15 to 18 kind of seems what most of the ranges are obviously it might be a little different than that but what is it like just being in that type of pressure situation yeah it's it makes you so mentally tough I mean and resilient as well and it's it's interesting when I look back now like I I'm like oh yeah I was 17 that feels you know so young but in the, when you're doing it in the moment you feel like an adult yeah. because oh, you're absolutely. doing very adult <laughs> things yeah you're yeah. traveling all the time for years without your parents and you have to be really independent and um, the training is so intense that you just, you have to grow up and mature so quickly and handle a lot of different types of stress. So um, it makes you really mentally tough. And I mean, post gymnastics, you kind of feel like, well, everything else seems a little bit <laughs> easy. <laughs> yeah, I don't think so. Maybe it's not, but, <laughs> um, but yeah, it's, it's intense. You learn, you know, I feel like I might be biased, but Gymnastics, I think, is one of the best sports to learn life lessons um, because you have to perform under really great amounts of pressure. Um, and the day-to-day -day is, is a grind. I know it's that way in a lot of sports, too. But, um, 
you know, you think about a balance beam, it's four feet off the ground, four inches wide. And, you know, and then in front of thousands of people, you, you got to do your best yeah. routine. It's, it's so hard. <laughs> I still look crazy. back, I'm like, how did we do that? Right? I'm, I, I am impressed. Yeah. I, I think that every time I watch mm -hmm. any type of gymnastics, how did they do that? Mm -hmm. Like, yes. seriously, we don't every really. single time. Like there's no, you can't be scared to do that. Stuff. Yeah. Oh, like, you got to oh, learn at a young age. Cause it's like you, ha right. you like you have to almost train your brain to like not be afraid of these things. And gymnastics is a sport where it's like athletes do have to like leave the sport due to like mental blocks and mental fears and all that. So it's like yeah, the younger you learn to like get over those fears and like overcome those hurdles, it's mm -hmm. yeah. it's important. Did you guys have school during this time, or was it kind of like at the gym? Yeah. How did we, that all work we out? We both are really fortunate to do like public schooling. So I I did like same as. Her, Jordan, we both did like half days at school. Okay, so it's I would really go to rare. School. Yeah. yeah, it's really rare to still be able to practice mm -hmm. as much as you need to and go mm -hmm. to regular school. Yeah, um, but I don't know how it was for you, but for me, it was like school was like my break. <laughs> that was like the easiest part of my day, and I would practice in the morning for two and a half hours, and then go to school for half a day, and then go back to practice for another four and a half. Um, but for some reason, my, my parent, I think my parents felt passionate too that. Um, having more of a balanced like lifestyle was really healthy for me, and I'm, I'm really glad that I, I did go to school. It wasn't normal whatsoever. Yeah. Everyone's like, why are you gone all the time? <laughs> Gymnastics. But. Yeah. Yeah, I was definitely glad I was able to like, kind of, like she said, had that have that break. Yeah. And mm -hmm. Feel like a little bit of a normal, a normal child. Um, I, I just did one long practice, so I'd go to school from like eight to noon, and okay. I'd like leave during lunch. So like I never experienced like a school lunch <laughs> all the way from like fifth grade. I already started leaving. Oh man. Um, but, and then I would train from yeah. like six, seven hours after that. I don't think I've ever met someone who thought that school was a break. <laughs> right. You know. School's like a punishment. Or yeah, something. exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Well, especially yeah. at that age too. I mean, most people are like, oh, I want to go to school. Mental break. Skipping classes yeah, yeah. and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Man, so family wise, you said, you know, your parents really supported you and stuff, but you traveling and you're going to different countries and stuff like you mentioned, what was that kind of like for them letting you do all that by yourselves? Mm -hmm. Um, I, I, I was always kind of a mature like child. Like I always seemed more adult than I like my age. So I think my parents had no problem letting me, you know, travel and handle that responsibility. I think from a family perspective, it was it was hard on my siblings, especially. I have three siblings, and she's got two. Um, you know, sometimes it's my parents are flying to like Italy or Guatemala to watch me compete, and you know, I think a lot of times that affected my siblings because they didn't get as much attention or um, didn't really have a normal childhood either. But um, but but overall, I had a really supportive family who um, I couldn't have done it without them. Yeah, my parents didn't really come to any international meets besides like. I think Olympics and one of the world championships, but um, similar to Jordan, like I was, <laughs> I think I, I we, we had to grow up really fast. And so it's crazy to think that I'd be like, this was before you could even like, before when you could text, like you had to be on Wi-Fi. Oh. So I'd be like, hey mom, <laughs> like I texted her from the hotel, I'm leaving to go to Venice. They're letting us sightsee like at 13 by yeah. ourselves. Yeah. Like, <laughs> why? like you're walking the, the canals and like going through those by yourself. Like, I mean, you had like a small group of friends, but like we were all like, probably ages 13 to 17. So it's crazy. To think of that now, I'm like, oh my gosh, that is not safe. And like yeah. your phone doesn't work because it has to be, you didn't have cellular, cellular back then. So um, yeah, I think it kind of forced us to grow up really quick, but. Oh yeah. yeah. The first time I went to Europe for track, I think I cried and I was grown. <laughs> like I was 23 maybe. Mm -hmm. And so it's mm -hmm. crazy that y'all did have to grow up so fast and y'all are doing those things at a young age with no phone because I would freak out yeah. if I went out and my phone wasn't working like that's wild so yeah so in the Olympics obviously both of y'all were part of the fierce five um tell us about that and do y'all still keep in contact with other members of that group like how has it been mm -hmm. since yeah um we do still keep in contact I mean we, we talk to Allie pretty frequently and Michaela Michaela grew up with her um she just saw Gabby, I saw a few Gabby weeks recently. Ago. Oh, really? She's, she's, that's she's so cool. training. Yeah, she yeah. was out recruiting and she, at the gym that Gabby's now training at. So, so yeah, it's it's interesting. Now we, you know, we all are in different parts of the country, but we have this big thing that we did in our lives that connects us, and uh, I think we'll always kind of feel that connection. We, but we still have yet to do like a full Fierce Five reunion. Um, so we will do that eventually. But um, yeah, it was just an incredible experience. I mean, you just you have these other girls who maybe, may, you know, are from California or Boston or all these different places that we came together for this month and 
um, did this really awesome thing together. It was really hard, and um, but we were all going through it together. I think that was really helpful. And you know, when I look back at the team competition where we did, we won the gold medal. It was like it was just so fun, and it was so fun to cheer each other on. And um, I don't know. I, I always I always felt like the team competitions were so much more meaningful to me as an athlete than the individual ones because you, you're doing it for something that's more than just yourself. Um, and I'll never forget that experience. Yeah, I think just we learned so much about each other, like growing, going through the, that, like those tough things and being able to accomplish like something. And I think like there was so much pressure put on us because it was like, hey, the U.S. haven't won an Olympic gold medal since 96. And, and that was the year I was born. So I was like, hey, like <laughs> I feel like we had to do it. And I think through that whole process, like we knew that there was pressure. But like Jordan said, like we knew we were set out and we wanted to have fun and we wanted it to be an experience that we like had fond memories of. So I think through the, all those hard training days and everything, we just tried to remember like the goal and not put too much pressure and just feel like, okay, this is something we get to do and we have, have fun when we, when, when we went out there. Yeah, so speaking of the fond memories, I know obviously it was a ton of pressure and you guys were really locked in and focused, but what are some of the fun things that you guys remember from that experience at the Olympics outside of obviously winning the gold? <laughs> I remember the dining hall. Like, it, everybody talks. Yes, hall. we were. We would try to find. Okay, we had like a list of like athletes. Like, hey, we want to try to get a picture with so and so. And we like with our little trays. We'd be like running. Around yeah. We had to ask our coaches permission. Yeah. Like, can we really? go over there and get a picture with with um the swimmers? Like, yeah. We had to ask permission. Yeah. So I remember trying to just be be like it just felt like yeah. I mean you're in this one the the Olympic Village surrounded by all these athletes that like have the same goal like have had this goal for years and dedicated a lot of their life. So to have like all that energy in one space, it was definitely very cool and felt very honored. But yeah, we were, I was like trying to fangirl over like all the athletes. Yeah. We were so sheltered. Like <laughs> <laughs> we weren't even allowed to like leave our little apartment and walk anywhere. Oh, um, but like, I remember the little things like we had to, we had to make it fun and we had to kind of goof, goof around and be silly with each other in order I think to cope with how stressful it was. <laughs> So I remember things like just being in our little rooms and just, you know, talking about the boys and like we always try to get the attention of the boy <laughs> gymnasts and like they would be outside like playing basketball and we'd be like, let's go sit outside and ice our, our, ice our ankles. <laughs> and, um, I remember stuff like that. It's like I think that just helped us get through because yeah. you know, yeah. what we were doing was so intense and high pressure that mm -hmm. we had to make it fun with each other. Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Kind of like be teenagers like yeah. you were. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, because everybody else around you are – Grown, mm -hmm. probably. Mm -hmm. So yeah. it's just very unique that y'all are there at that age. I remember, I mean, some of my friends, older friends in track world were in 2012 Olympics, 2016, but I would ask them, like, everybody, so when you said the food, I was like, everybody always talks about the cafeteria <laughs> and all the uh -huh. options. But I do remember specifically, I was like, did, what athletes did y'all see? They were like, well, we didn't get to see gymnastics. Like, they were, they kind of had them separate. So it's just, again, interesting to, like, hear that and hear the uh, athletes kind of fanning over each other, yeah. um, even though y'all are all like have reached this pinnacle yeah. that everybody's trying to get to. So. When you guys competed, though, what was that like, you know, in, in that arena with all of these people there watching you guys and, and you're trying your best to just put your best forward as well? I don't know about you, but the first the first meet when we walked out and I literally like I almost started crying and I was like wait you can't cry you have to fall in like five <laughs> minutes it was just really overwhelming and just really an ex amazing experience and this gives you a sense this really like this really shows you that we were we were teenagers even yeah. though we felt like adults is that um we were obsessed with hot everything hot pink like we loved hot pink and the arena everything in London like all the venues were like decked out in hot pink so we walked out, we were like, everything is hot pink. <laughs> we were so pumped. So that really shows that we, we actually were teenagers. Yeah. Um, but I remember walking in and just feeling overwhelmed with um, just emotions. I bet. We then had to reel it back in. Um, but just, gosh, it was just, you know, a really cool experience. And Kyla, what about you? Uh, I mean, I feel like sometimes I was like too young to, yeah. <laughs> to like remember like how, how big of a deal it was, but. I don't know. I, I, I loved competing in front of like crowds and in big pressure moments. So yeah. I think I almost tried to make a game of it and just have as much fun as I could and just remember that, okay, all these hours, all this time, all this dedication and sacrifice that I put in the sport, like to just go out and do what you know how to do and not like overthink it. 
you didn't go and compete in collegiate gymnastics, mm -hmm. correct? Mm -hmm. Okay, so you were an elite gymnast, and then you transitioned over to NCAA gymnastics. How was that? It was such a unique experience. I think when all like all the years that I competed in elite, I always knew that I wanted to be a collegiate athlete. My my dad, he he played two sports in college, so he always like told me how much fun and how rewarding it was. So. Um, I actually was like the only one out of the other um, members of the Fierce Five that kept my eligibility. And so I was able to compete in college. And it's just like a different kind of pressure competing in college versus, I mean, the London Olympics, like you compete as a team, but for the most part, like elite gymnastics is a very individual sport. And so you're used to competing, but it's like self pressure um, and pressure like sometimes for your coaches or for whoever, but going out and competing a lot more because in the league you compete only like three, four times a year and then going out and competing for 14 weeks um, in a row <laughs> and competing all around. I, I like that pressure and like one of the, my favorite parts of being an athlete is competing. So I definitely loved being able to compete almost every weekend in college. Kyla was the first ever gymnast to have the trifecta, which means yeah, Olympic champion, world champion, and NCAA champion. I don't know if she'll ever say Incredible. that. Incredible. I'm glad you brought it up. Yep. So <laughs> you're the friend that hypes the friend. Yeah. <laughs> you really need those. Like, that is a very unique, like, that's that's cool. Which which one was the best one? Oh, oh gosh. Um, <laughs> oh, I don't know if I can choose. I mean, they all are, like, such different experiences, but... Oh gosh, I can't choose. <laughs> That's a good answer I though. Keep choose. it keep it fair. Uh, but I feel like the like in London it was like we were expected to win and then we were able to actually accomplish that. So I was like really we were really really proud of that and then when I won um like NCAA championships as a team in 2018 like we went in and we started and we were actually like in last place before the last event. And so I w wasn't even expecting to, like we, our whole team wasn't even expecting to win that year in college and to like have the best, one of the best last rotations. And we were on beam, which is like one of the scariest events to compete yeah. under pressure um, and to come up and win. Like th that was really exciting because it was like, oh my gosh, I didn't even think it was possible. And then we were able to achieve it. So what do you guys do with your medals? That's what I want to know. Are they like? Mine's like in my, at my house yeah. <laughs> in a drawer. <laughs> Yeah. I don't even have mine here. I don't Where know if I should it? It's still it's still at home with my parents. Mm. Okay. Well, mm -hmm. it's a good yeah. hands with the parents. I didn't, like, I didn't yeah. like claim of them. When I drove when I moved here, I I didn't like it was still in a safety deposit box. And, oh, and yeah. I forgot to get it out before I moved here. <laughs> so, did you guys ever think that you would link up again after all of the Olympic stuff? Or was everyone just kind of going their separate ways and um, well, I knew she was being recruited at UCLA when I, when, while I was in school there. I was a team manager for a few years. And then um, I remember uh, the head coach there, Miss Val, texting me one day and she's like, Kyla's coming to school, get her gear together, like get her locker nameplate, like get all this, get all this organized for Kyla. And I was like, oh my gosh, Kyla's coming. And, and I knew we would kind of cross paths again. Um, I don't know if we knew that would happen when we were competing in the Olympics. I don't think we probably guessed it, but. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I wasn't even thinking college yeah. back then <laughs> when I was 15, mm -hmm. so. But we've sort of kind of found each other in every phase of life, which has really been cool. <laughs> and now we're like neighbors. We each lives on yeah, the street really? from me. Um, it's just been really fun to kind of mm -hmm. be together in yeah. all different phases of life. Yeah, and when I was like, when I was finishing college, I didn't really know what I wanted to do. and like the volunteer position opened up at Arkansas and I did not even think I was, would get into college coaching, but I called Jordan and, and I'm like, um, oh, I'm like, what do you think about me coming to Arkansas? And she's like, well, she's like, well, where are you looking? You, are you getting into coaching? I'm like, no, I'm, I'm not looking anywhere else. I'm like, I'm just <laughs> looking, I'm just looking here cause, cause you're the coach and yeah. this it, such an amazing program at, at Arkansas. So it was kind of just like a door that opened and I took the opportunity and now I'm here to stay, to stay so. So how is it, y'all were teammates mm -hmm. back in the Olympics and then you Coach said you were a manager at UCLA mm -hmm. and then you were a volunteer assistant, so then you were yeah. one of her coaches mm -hmm. and now y'all work together. How has that transition just been yeah. from little girls to now inspiring and coaching mm -hmm. young girls yeah. together? Well, a funny, funny bit before I go into that is that um, my first year coaching was her freshman year at UCLA. Okay. So that's the first part. And then her first meet ever competing in college 
was against Arkansas. <laughs> yes, another <laughs> really, so really, really circle. crazy fact. Isn't that weird? <laughs> That's so weird. Fun fact. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's just, I think we joke all the time that our brains work the, very similarly. Like we often, <laughs> we have so many similarities. We're, we're also, our personalities are different, but our brains just work the same. And I think that's what um, makes it work really well for us as coaches. Um, we just kind of get each other and come from a very similar, um, I think our families are very similar. Yeah, and I think um, just the way we approach work and life is with a lot of the same values. So that's been really fun. And then coaching her was interesting. Like Kyla didn't require a lot of coaching. <laughs> Let me just say that it wasn't that hard, but um, just, I think it, that was probably the, the biggest challenge I think was just figuring out how I was her teammate and now I'm her coach. It was also my first year coaching. So I was learning a lot, um, but she was great. I mean, she was, we worked really well together and had a lot of fun and um, it was just a really rewarding experience, I think for me especially, but um, yeah. Well, I'm gonna pump Jordan up now because when, when she was our coach at UCLA, she was our floor coach and the first, was it the first or the second year? But we were ranked like number one on floor the whole year when she was our coach. So, and that's a thing, a thing to pump up Jordan. Thanks, that's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I, don't, I think it's cool that we've like had a relationship through like so many different phases in life and I think just having like that like you said that base I feel like when whatever path we've gone through like I've been able like we've had so much trust and just because like she said we come from similar backgrounds and um, we both kind of have that drive and passion for whatever we're doing so I feel like having that it's a it's a cool yeah, friendship I think the trust <laughs> is a good thing to point out too so yeah. now that you're both here in Arkansas, neighbors, essentially, <laughs> uh, do you guys hang out a lot outside of gymnastics? What do you guys like to do? Yeah, I mean, we do, we do hang out, and her fiancé and my fiancé are here, and it's, like, fun to do things together, and we just get to do all these life things now. And um, obviously, we work a lot just right. being in this career, and um, Kyla is – Kyla and I both are – but Kyla especially is out on the road recruiting basically all the time. Um, so it's busy, but, you know, even those moments when we're just in the office and joking around or, you know, really figuring out and solving problems or, or issues that we have within the program to try to make it better, it's like that's the really fun part is just that we get to do this – really challenging and fun thing together. Um, it's just, yeah, it's been really cool. We, we brought up the fiancés. Yes. I want to get into Don't. it. Oh, yes. God. I love wedding. Sorry. Yes, Sorry. let's get into it. We're wedding planning. Mean, I know. We are, we're wedding we. planning. Yeah. How is that going? What's, what's been the most exciting part of that? Kyla, you start. Oh, gosh. <laughs> I'm only just getting started. In the wedding planning, um, I'm still trying to pick a venue, which has been a difficult yeah. thing for me. But, um, yeah, I don't know. I, I'm like excited to get more into like the the little things like the um all like the stationery yeah. and like all like in the, the flowers and all that. But I'm still tr like big picture yeah. kind of. She needs, find, she needs to find a venue. Yeah, yeah. you're more in. The, I'm at the like the, the end final stages. Stage, yeah. I'm in the final stages. We're like <laughs> less than three months out from the wedding, and it's you know we just did cake tasting as yeah. you know, and um it's it's been really fun. But um yeah, it's cool that. I got to be a part of your your uh, engagement too because we were in on the secret like we knew it was happening that day and her fiance Justin is just a great guy too so it's been it's been fun yeah. destinations or Fayetteville or we're getting married right here in Fayetteville oh, okay so. wow. yeah what made you choose Fayetteville um well my family is in Michigan and and my fiance's family is in Texas so it just you know there wasn't a, a perfect spot and from a planning standpoint it's actually just easier for me to have yeah. it here and um <laughs> So yeah, I mean that's that's really all there was to it. Yeah, I have a bunch of hog fans outside. I know. Yeah, <laughs> we're gonna be calling yeah. the hogs calling outside the your hogs. wedding and stuff. Yeah, I mean we're so busy with um, just the year, and right now we're in the thick of our competition season, and we, you know when we're not competing, we're recruiting and having camps, and just there's so many things on the schedule. It was just, you know, we had to work around all of that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Makes sense. I know. Well, we've got a game. We do. We have oh, a game that we're fun. gonna play. Uh, so we have some whiteboards here, and basically it's like a friendship test. How well oh, do y'all know this. each other? I think I've played this before. <laughs> so we're going to ask y'all a series of questions. We're going to ask you a question, okay. and you're going to write down what you think the answer is for, for, the, other for the other person. And then we'll see okay. if they are correct. Okay. And then when you turn them around, just say your answer, and we'll go through it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right, Talia, you want to start us off? I'll kick us off. Okay. Early bird or night owl?
All right, and go. Early bird. She's a night owl. <laughs> so opposite here. Mm -hmm. Are the answers correct? Yes. yes. Yeah, okay. <laughs> spot okay. on. That was easy. They did say that their brains work alike they earlier, so we should expect balance. this. All right, Netflix or Hulu? You're quick with that one, Kyla. <laughs> I don't even know if I know my answer. <laughs> okay, turn around. Oh, Netflix. Netflix. Yeah, Both I of them. Netflix too. Yeah. yeah. Big Netflix. Do y'all even Netflix have time to watch people? TV shows? <laughs> I feel oh, like you guys are always at night. Yeah. 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 I like to watch. I like. A lot of like rom coms. Oh, we do either shows, shows or movies. Watch. Okay. But, like rom coms. We we had Britton on recently from track, and she was like, "Oh, I'm so into all the horror movies." Yeah. We just no. can't relate with that. No. <laughs> so rom coms. I've seen yeah. one scary movie, and my friend made it was her birthday, so she made me go, and I was like, <laughs> "Never again." Never again. <laughs> You're a good friend. <laughs> That's funny. Okay, go to Starbucks order. Oh. I know. <laughs> I thought that one would be a little hard, but they immediately went to it. All right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And go. I said hot black coffee. Do you get a tea, tea or a refresher? refresher? Yes. yes. That is true. I, I was going to say that's hard because I don't drink coffee. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. So I, just I change up my coffee. Starbucks order all the but it's it's some sort of tea or refresher. Okay. okay. I, do, I just get black coffee. Black yeah. Coffee. I'm only likes it hot. That's what I added. The only hot. hot. No ice. She doesn't like so ice even if it's coffee. sick of the summer? Yep. She does hot not coffee. drink ice coffee. Oh, my God. If yeah. I drink iced coffee, I'll be like, <laughs> all day, I'll be shivering. For three, for three. Favorite gym apparatus? Like gymnastics? Yeah. That was quick, too. Turn around. Floor. Ours? Yes. Yep. 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 Okay. See, y'all are on. Y'all are on. I was about to say. Okay. Do you know each other's middle name? Okay, then we don't even yeah, have to write yeah, we, don't, we, don't we don't even Brianna, <laughs> Kyla, Brianna. Jordan Marie. Mm -hmm. oh, that is <laughs> this is what happens when you've known each other since you were like have 15, you 17 years no, old. No, no. <laughs> I didn't literally, has any, no one's has gotten as good of a score as you guys are right now. All right. If she had to compete in another sport, which would she choose? Can I talk this one out? Cause yeah. She still plays volleyball. But I feel like you like softball, but like track is in my brain too. One of those three? Okay. Go with your gut. Okay. Pressure. All right. I'm going to track. track. Yeah? Yes. <laughs> we got yeah. track. Yeah. Track oh, yeah. 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 Okay, yeah. I'm here for that. I'm I'm yeah. here for that. Oh my gosh. If I, yeah. yeah. If I didn't sprinter, I would have been a sprinter. Yeah. Track, track and know. field in the Olympics is so awesome. I would, I would what would gymnasts so, be the, besides pole oh. vault? What would gymnasts be the best at? Mm -hmm. Track. Do you know? Actually, we have a professional here that used to be a gymnast, and Coach Johnson. He doesn't tease her, but she's very like she walks, <laughs> and he's like Jada, and she points her toes when she's running, and he's like Jada. We are not in gymnastics. <laughs> Dorsa flex because we have to. Yeah, yeah. So. yeah. Okay, we're not good. We need to leave the floor like that. that. Yeah. <laughs> she does that, and that's how she runs. And he's like, Jada, cut it out. This track. <laughs> that's great. But probably she's a sprinter. She's very okay. strong. She has all the muscles. So maybe like a 60 or a hundred or the long yeah. jump. But My mom was a long jumper. Yeah, I think I think long jump would be a good one. My mom but and my sister did long jump. Do pole vault or yeah. swim or uh, divers I, tend to yeah. go into the pole vault as well. I watched the pole vault. I don't think I would like it. <laughs> Y'all wouldn't be scared. So that's that true. might be something that you could immediately, because the older you get in track, pole vault's not something you just pick up because it's yeah. so high. Like, I think yeah. I would like sprinting so. because you just got to go hard. Like, at least that's what it's I like think. It's like running oh. to the vault. Y'all yeah. are sprinting. Oh, no, that's true. Go yeah. Don't watch our form. Don't watch Jimmy's <laughs> vault running form, though. People make fun of okay. all the time. Really? Oh gosh, there's a lot of weird runs out there for, for vault. That's funny. I'm gonna be paying attention to it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, guilty pleasure snack food. What's your snack in your house? Ooh, I know. <laughs> Wait. I said pita chips and hummus. Mm. Mike and Ike's? No. Oh. <laughs> We've got our own. Yeah. Wait, so what is it? I don't know. I mean, I think mine would be like potato chips. Okay. Um, I have so many. I just I like junk food in general, but. Um, <laughs> well, I guess it's not really junk food. Yeah. I was just going for snacks. Mm. Yeah. 
I do love hummus, though. That one, that one. I don't consider that yeah. guilty. I wouldn't feel guilty eating. Okay. That's true. All right, they got it. <laughs> All right, uh, we'll discuss two more. This later. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> get on the same page. Okay. Uh, favorite artist to listen to? Or if it's easier, we could do genre of music. Yeah. I mean, I know you like pop music. Let's okay. do genres. I want R and B. Yeah, I'd probably say R and B. You would say yeah. pop, right? Okay. Yeah. 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 Mm, yeah. My favorite. Okay, okay, last question. Does she prefer breakfast, lunch, or dinner? Okay. I guess we could throw brunch in there. You like luncher? Because that's a thing now. Brunch. Are you a dinner person? Dinner? No, I'm a breakfast. Well, okay, if you don't eat uh, breakfast, I'm tired. <laughs> I know. Breakfast. Breakfast. I don't eat breakfast. breakfast. I know that. I know. I love breakfast foods. I'm okay, like, I would have okay. said breakfast too. Okay. Okay. Well, at least we're on the same page with our wrong answers. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we only miss like two. I know. I was telling them earlier, like I don't really eat breakfast, but then like, when I do, when you go out to breakfast, I get yeah. When I go out, to yeah. breakfast. Totally makes sense. Y'all still did exceptional. Thank you. You got it. That was very good. I know. So Jordan, Kyla, thank you so much for your time and for coming on That's the Tea. We really had a good time. I hope you guys did too. Thank you. This was a fun interview. Yeah. (laughs)